Hello and welcome back. My name is Jennifer and I make stuff. And in this video I'm going to show you how to make a dark, rustic, academian-inspired hallway clothing rack. So these are all the tools I'm going to use for this clothing rack. I'm actually going to use a wooden shelf that I actually got for like one dollar at a flea market. And I'm also going to pair it with an old curtain rod and some other metal fittings to get this rustic look. So I'm first going to see where the metal brackets are going to be on the wooden shelf because on the wall, the holes in the wall is actually off center, which was from the previous floating rack that was in the apartment when I actually moved here. So I didn't know that it actually was off center. So I wanted to first be sure that I had the markings correct so the shelf would be centered when it's attached to the wall. And before I do any kind of finish, I first want to pre-drill some holes to the shelf so I I know where the markings are because I am actually going to stain the wood and it might be too hard for me to actually see the markings I made for the screw holes. And first to give it more of that kind of antique look I'm sanding down all the edges to give it more of a rounded look because that's what wood looks like when they have been used so I don't want these sharp corners I want these soft edges. And I'm going over with a rough grit sandpaper for this. Next I'm going to use a dark brown stain and it's actually very dark so I'm diluting it a bit with oil since this stain is oil based. So I just mixed in a little bit of oil so it wouldn't be as intense. And you notice here then when I'm brushing on the stain it looks very intense and very opaque. But as soon as I have gone over with the brush I'm going to use a lint free cloth to wipe off the excess stain and then I'm going to go over with another clean lint free cloth to buff in the rest of the stain and I noticed that when it was a bit more transparent the yellow tones of the wood started to show through which made the wood look like this deep mahogany tone with a little bit of a pool tone tint in some lights but still had these reddish tones it's very hard to describe So for the metal fittings, I'm actually going to create a rust effect. So it looks like these are old pieces of metal that start to rust. And to get this effect, I'm going to use Mod Podge. It doesn't matter if it's glossy or the matte Mod Podge. The fact is Mod Podge, when it dries, it dries in the texture you apply it on. And since I'm applying it in a stippling technique, it's going to leave these kind of textures that looks a little bit like hammered metal. Or, you know, the, the, how the surface looks like when it starts to rust is it's starting to peel off of it and a lot of different pieces of the metal is actually starting to fall off or flake off. Once the Mod Podge had dried, I'm going to start with the painting process. And I'm only going to use acrylics for this, because before I used chalk paint and all that, but I felt that I wanted to try out to just use acrylics for this one, because acrylics dry in this setting matte finish. And I'm going over with a thin layer of the black acrylic paint here, and I'm also applying it in a stippling motion to even enhance all of those textures that I added with the Mod Podge. And the great thing about this black paint, it's called ivory black and it has sort of this reddish tint to the black. So it doesn't look like jet black with those bluish tones. It actually has this reddish undertone just going to be perfect with the layering effect I'm going to add later with the brown tones and the reddish tones. Next I'm going to go with Burnt Umber, which is the reddish brown, and this is going to be the layering effect or base layer for all the rust. So I'm going to get a deeper tone of this rust effect that I'm going for, and I'm applying this in a dry brush technique, meaning as little paint as possible. And this is also so it can highlight all of those textures that I added using the Mod Podge. You can also see that I'm trying to create an effect that looks like some rust has started to run in some of the screw holes, meaning that 
it looks like it has been weathered from being maybe outside in the rain and the rust is starting to run down. So I wanted to play around a little bit with those effects, make it look more antique, more used, more like it has been aged and weathered, exposed to the elements. Last and final step is going to be this very rusty reddish orangey tone to finish off and enhance the rust effect that I'm going for. And I'm mixing in the reddish brown, some of the yellow ochre and a little bit of crimson red to really get those orangey tones. And this one is really to enhance all the highlights and the edges and corners. And I'm using as little paint as possible. So I'm doing a lot of dry brush here and I'm trying to intensify that kind of look of the rust has started to run when it has been raining. So you see definitely the screw holes have these kind of lines that looks like it's some rust has been running down and all that. And here I can just play around with adding more rust where I feel it would make more sense there would be more rust and also try not to cover up too much of the brown but still intensify the effect of this antique look on the metal fittings. And I really like the effect that you can see the metal peeking through underneath all the paint because I feel like that actually enhances the effect that this is metal metal and it's metal they're starting to rust instead of just being some parts that have been painted. Before the assembly, I'm actually going to paint a little bit of this rust effect to the shelf because I thought it would make more sense that it would be stained with a lot of rust in those areas instead of being a clean finish. And I wanted to add more of an aged effect to the edges where all the corners have been stained. So I'm just going over with a fine grit sandpaper, like 300 grit, 400 grit. And this is just to lighten up all those corners and remove some of the stain which is also going to intensify the look of an aged wooden piece. first step of the assembly is to attach the brackets to the shelf. And I'm just using two antique brass looking screws that are also added a rusty look to. And the next step is to add the curtain brackets, which is going to hold the curtain rod in place. And attaching it like this is going to make sure that the distance from the wall to the clothing hanger isn't going to be too tight. And the last step is the metal brackets that is going to attach the clothing rack to the wall. And this is what I meant with pre-drilling some holes before I start to stain the wood. So I could easily see where I needed to attach the screws and just screw them in place. Here I'm using my home decor wax because I don't have any kind of matte finish. But obviously if the parts that you have given this rust effect to aren't going to be used that much, then you obviously don't have to use this step. I obviously want my clothing hangers to match the style that I'm going for here. So I'm going to paint my clothing hangers with some black shock paint thinned a lot with water so it isn't too intense. I want to have a little bit of transparency so it will have this kind of color variations. And then just play around with this kind of antique vintage look to it. And so I go over with some brown shock paint. This one I'm going over with a dry brush technique just like I did before when I did the rust effect. I'm also applying the paint to the metal hooks of the clothing hangers also. And like I did with the metal fittings, I'm going to create a rust effect using the same acrylics that I did before. And I'm just painting it on with a dry brush technique all over the clothing hangers. Now obviously I could have left it like this, but I knew that these clothing hangers are going to be used a lot and I don't want also the risk of paint getting rubbed off on the clothing. So I'm going to add a protective wax finish on all the clothing hangers. But I'm only doing this on the wooden part and leaving the metal hooks alone. 
So first, you can see that I have applied a thick, wet layer because this is a liquid wax. But I'm making sure that the wax had dried a bit. And then I'm wiping off the majority of the wax with a lint-free cloth. And then I'm going over with another lint-free cloth just to buff the wax into the wood. And then as a final step to enhance more of that rustic antique look, I'm going to use just a regular kitchen sponge and just rubbing it on top of the surface when the paint isn't completely dry yet, including the wax. And this is going to rub off a little bit of the paint to give it more of that used look that the paint had been rubbed off after lots and lots of use over the years. And then it's finally time to attach the finished clothing rack to the wall in the hallway. And I also decided to change the shoe rack and make sure that I had something that matched the style of the clothing rack and the rest of the hallway. And you're going to see that I'm using some wooden crates here, those kind of apple boxes. And then just start to place all the shoes just like I did on the other shoe rack that I had earlier. Now obviously to intensify this dark academian style, I'm adding some of these antique vintage looking decorative parts on top of the shelf. So I'm adding some books and some plants and some other decor like crystals and some branches and some leaves just to intensify this kind of dark academia or cottage core or maybe witchy bohemian style that is going to enhance the whole look that I was going for. And that's the finished result. That's how I created my own dark academian, rustic looking clothing rack for my new hallway makeover. I'm super happy with the finished result. It definitely captures that look that I was going for. A little bit of that enchantress, witchy, dark boho look, whatever you could call this. It just had this kind of warmth to it and really embraces nature. All those elements that I'm so into. And before I went safe with everything, I wanted to paint it all white and just keep with lighter textures and lighter material and all that. But I noticed that that's not me, but this interior is definitely what I feel most attached to. And I'm super happy with this finished result and looking forward to working on the next part for this hallway makeover. And I hope you're excited too, because this is the next series of upcoming videos there's going to be on my channel. So I hope you enjoyed watching and got some ideas to make your own hallway clothing rack and I'll see you in the next video.